Volvo has joined Tesla and a number of other companies, including Ford, Hyundai, and Kia, in using Tesla's gigacasting machines. It's ordered machines. It has two of them on the way. In addition to that, it is also using another Tesla specialty, another Tesla way of manufacturing vehicles. It seems as though Herford Tesla make vehicles everyone else is actually copying. That may sound um, fanboyish, but it's actually really not. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And it's interesting here. I think Volvo guys has a really good CEO. Volvo wants to be EV only as soon as possible. They're aiming for that to happen in 2026. And they've outlined some of the benefits of structural battery packs. When they revealed the Polestar 5 today, make no mistake, Volvo, Polestar, Geely, they're under the same umbrella. They're doing pretty similar things with each other. So Polestar, they said that using structural battery packs, they've got a different name for it. They call it a bonded aluminum chassis, but it's basically a structural battery pack. will help reduce weight of EVs significantly and also make cars much more structurally rigid. It seems as though almost the entire automotive industry now is moving towards structural battery packs and gigacasting. Some companies have done nothing in this area, but some of them have committed almost completely. I mean, obviously Toyota already has a gigapress from Tesla's supplier, Hydra in Italy. But at the same time, we learned that Hyundai, Hyundai, Kia, and Ford, plus another European automaker, it's believed to be either BMW or Mercedes, has ordered gigapress machines from Hydra in Italy, which is, of course, Tesla's supplier. So Hydra now are fast becoming one of the biggest automotive industry suppliers when no one had heard of them five years ago. Absolutely no one. I mean, there is no articles, no nothing about them. All of a sudden, as a result of Tesla doing this, well, all of, they're getting heaps of heaps of orders. So they're becoming a, a much more influential company. And essentially what's happening is the automotive industry is changing the way it makes cars for the better. There's been a lot of negative press around gigacasting and structural battery packs. But the truth is, obviously, automakers are seeing the results and saying that is the best way to make an electric car. Not just an electric car, but the best way to make a car, period. Volvo has joined the so-called gigacasting revolution. It has two new 9,000 ton EV presses. Now, the, the intriguing thing is here, guys, Tesla used a 9,000 ton EV press for the Cybertruck. The Cybertruck is a very big vehicle. Why Why have Volvo ordered 9,000 ton presses? Why do they need one so big? I mean, the press that Tesla used for the Model Y is significantly smaller than that. I believe it's only 6,000 ton. Well, for one, they're going to be using it on a large electric vehicle. So it won't be as big as a Cybertruck, but it won't be that much smaller either. A growing chorus of automakers and industry experts will now tell you that gigapresses, the high pressure diecasting machines for car body assembly pioneered by Tesla, are the key to cranking out affordable, lighter weight, and much better quality electric vehicles in huge volumes. One, they reduce approximately, depending on the automaker, 100 parts down to a single part. So much less work is needed. Uh, the actual part is so much better quality. You don't have to hope that all the welds and joins and everything are done really well. And it's so much quicker. You're talking about a couple of minutes to make the actual one single piece versus hours to put the other pieces together. Volvo is the latest automaker to join Tesla's gigacasting revolution. This is a good thing for good thing for consumers. You're gonna get EVs that are no heavier than internal combustion engine vehicles. If you look at the weight of the Tesla Model 3, it's a very similar weight to internal combustion sedans, the same size. Mercedes C-Class, for example, is a very similar weight to a Tesla Model 3. Now people say, the big problem with EVs is what? They are too heavy. Well, this changes the game. Gigapresses and structural battery packs make EVs a similar weight to internal combustion engines because they allow battery packs to be smaller in order to get the same range. Of course, if you add increased energy density in batteries, what you find is you have the perfect trifecta. Higher energy density, lower weight vehicles because of gigapresses and structural battery packs plus more energy plus more structural rigidity and safer vehicles essentially you've got the perfect ev last month we learned ford and hyundai had bought gigapresses from italy's hydra group but someone else in europe another manufacturer did as well they just didn't want to reveal their name 
Anyway, Tesla is apparently looking at using even bigger machines now. They're looking at using die casting one piece for the almost the entire car for the new Model 2 that'll cost 25,000 US dollars. Well, that's the aim. That's how Tesla plans to reduce the price of its EVs even further. Anyway, that's probably the next step for other automakers. Go from gigapresses, structural battery packs to possibly mega one piece die casting, mega castings as Tesla have called them. The report was accurate on Hyundai and Ford because Hydra confirmed the transaction on its LinkedIn page yesterday. The company said it awarded a con it was awarded a contract by Volvo Cars for two 9,000 ton gigapress machines. That's the largest model that Hydra make. That is enormous. These machines are huge. So the question is, what vehicles are they actually for? Well, I'm going to say most likely one of them is for, or possibly both of them are for Volvo's new kind of XC90 upper large electric SUV. It's a similar size to, like I said, the Volvo XC90, which is internal combustion plug-in hybrid right now, like the Kia the new Kia EV9, or a similar size, for example, Toyota Land Cruiser. The company noted that the 9,000 ton aluminum casting machines, which are said to be among the largest die casting machines in the world, will represent a remarkable leap forward in automotive manufacturing technology. Now, I remember that there was hundreds and hundreds of comments on these um, boards, car messaging forums, and um, basically websites where people review cars that slammed Tesla's use of gigapresses and die casting and structural battery packs. They've said, if this was a good idea, the automotive industry would have already been doing it. Tesla is insane. This is clear evidence of Elon Musk losing the plot, thinks he's smarter than everyone else, but he's not, he's a moron. Well, yeah, maybe some of the things Elon have done are not so genius, but in this case, those people, I haven't seen any apologies. I haven't seen any retractions. I haven't seen anyone say, oh, Strange, everyone else is now copying Tesla's way of doing things. But kudos to Volvo, kudos to Ford, kudos to Hyundai, kudos to, I mean, BYD, to the other Chinese automakers who have decided this is a good thing, let's adopt a better way of making cars. It's hard to do that, right? Blackberry, they died because they didn't adopt a better way. These companies are innovating, and that suggests to me that there is likely gonna be some success with their EV sales in the future. Volvo is investing 1.25 billion in a new EV plant in Slovakia in Europe. It's its third factory in the country. And it's its third factory across Europe. And that site will build 250,000 EVs per year when it starts building next generation Volvo EVs in 2026. Now, when it announced this EV plant last year, the automaker said that construction would start in 2023 with equipment and production lines to be installed during 2024, but the factory has not yet been built. So if these gigapress machines are intended for that factory, it is a bit weird that this order <laughs> has been placed for a factory that hasn't even started. I mean, they haven't even dug the excavations for the factory yet. So maybe they're actually gonna go somewhere else. I don't know there. Anyway, gigacasting, why is it so good? Well, here's what Inside EV said. Automakers are following in Tesla's footsteps after the EV maker and IGA group pioneered gigacasting for the entire automotive industry and proved it as a viable manufacturing technique. By the way, Tesla did get some kudos from Toyota. Toyota's engineers said that the way that Tesla had built the Model Y was an engineering masterpiece. They said it was genius. That's Toyota's engineers. That's the highest praise I think you can possibly get. That's a real positive. I'm gonna say, you know what? Kudos to you guys at Toyota for saying that, admitting to that. And well done to Tesla for actually making this happen. Batteries and software are expensive, they're heavy. And of course, as automakers begin to try to make more EVs, they're discovering it's expensive and they can't make a profit. But this allows the manufacturing of EVs to be faster. Tesla takes 10 hours to build an EV. Volvo, Volkswagen, automaker, other automakers take approximately 30 hours. This will enable them to reduce that time. And the quicker you can make the car, the cheaper it is to produce. Car makers that adopted or are adopting gear casting include Geely Zika. So obviously they're basically a sister brand to Volvo. Then you've got Cadillac for the Celestique flagship, Toyota for its future EVs, Polestar, Hyundai, Ford. It's really laying out across the entire automotive industry. And there's apparently a number of Chinese automakers who use them as well. 
Toyota is perfecting the technology it says in its plant in Japan, and it showcased the advantages of gigacasting in a tech workshop. It said it meant for Toyota, it could turn 88 parts and hours of labor into only a couple of minutes and almost no labor. Toyota revealed that the rear section of the BZ4X SUV will eventually be made from one giant cast in future compared to 88 individual castings at the moment, which obviously those 88 have to be glued, bonded, welded together. That takes a long time. So this is a big deal. Cost will come down. Toyota's BZ4X is expensive in many markets. Toyota makes a loss on the BZ4X and it's relatively heavy for its size. Just this one change to the BZ4X would probably reduce its weight by 150 kilos or 300 pounds and make it probably a few thousand dollars cheaper for Toyota to produce. Idra Group claims gigacasting is inherently eco-friendly, reduces waste and energy consumption, and this is a big advantage. And keep in mind, there's another advantage here that I don't think anyone's pointing out. We know we can recycle battery packs. They last a very long time now, and we can recycle them. It's called black mass. It's, it's worth 10,000 US dollars per ton for black mass. That's just chopped up batteries. It's not even the actual refined products from the battery themselves. But what about the rest of the car? What do we do with it? Do we just scrap it? No. If you have one giant piece of the car made purely of aluminium, as these are, it's very easy to recycle and very profitable. Think about it. One enormous extrusion of aluminium is extremely valuable. So at the end life use of an EV, the battery pack will often be used for energy storage or other purposes, could be recycled, and massive parts of the cars can then be recycled very easily. Aluminium is a very valuable commodity. So that the entire automotive industry is moving in what I think is a very, very positive direction as a result of gigacasting. The next step though, is basically making the entire car from a megacast. That's what Tesla wants to do with its new EVs. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.